A huge thank you to patron El Capitan Nico for suggesting today's video topic. If you want to suggest a topic for next Wednesday's Name Explain video, all you have to do is support Name Explain on Patreon for one dollar a month. Find out more by visiting patreon.com forward slash Name Explain, which will be linked down below. Anyway, air travel is one of the most incredible human inventions. Our engineering and technical know-how has allowed the world to be a much more interconnected place than at any previous point in history. Trips that were once grueling voyages over rough seas or harsh terrains, which could span days, weeks or even months, can now be completed in a few hours. I can fly from London all the way to New York City in like 8 hours, all while watching a vaguely new film on a tiny screen in front of me and being served way too overpriced drinks and food. Most of us have flown on a plane at one point or another in our lives, and because of just how popular and expansive the world of aviation has become, it has picked up a whole lexicon of words. We all know the names we use for parts of the plane, the places we get planes from, and even terms to the people who work on them. Yet what's interesting about the language of aviation is that it's not entirely unique. Despite there not really being anything else quite like air travel out there, many of the words used in aviation were actually borrowed, or stolen as I say in the title of this video for more dramatic effect, from a completely different mode of transport entirely. That being the lexicon of nautical navigation. It goes without saying that travelling via the sea and travelling through the air are two very different experiences. Let's go back to that London to New York idea. While you can't sail out of London for New York, you can instead go via Southampton. The trip takes 7 days and while on board you have access to impressive looking food options, entertainment and even an actual bed. It costs from £699 per person. A flight from London to New York however is far quicker and somehow cheaper. You could normally find flights around the £300 mark and it only takes around 8 hours or so as mentioned earlier. Yet you don't get the luxuries of a ship unless you fork out some extra cash. Suffice to say both these trips would be two very different experiences. Yet whichever route you choose, you will hear a similar lexicon of words being used on either trip. Some of this terminology is really obvious. Like, take the terms we use for the people in control. Terms like captain for the people in charge and crew for everyone else are heard on both ships and planes, though these terms can be found in other places too. We have captains in the military and on sports teams, and crews can be found all over the place, from construction crews to film crews. We however also have a term like cabin. This is used in sea travel and air travel to refer to the main innards of a ship or a plane. Though once again, cabin can be found in other places, most noticeably as a standalone building usually made of wood and found in nature. Then we also have a term like boarding. This is the name we use when people get on a ship, and if you've ever been on a plane, I'm sure you've noticed boarding is used there too. Port is a term deeply linked with boats and maritime movement as a whole. It's where ships come into and depart from. Yet despite being so linked with sailing, we've used it to refer to the place where planes depart and arrive into as well. Albeit we've adapted the word a little bit and added the word of air to the start of it. I guess things could get pretty confusing if a boat arrived at a port that was meant for planes or vice versa. Beyond these however, there's terms that are used for both but are more linked with one or the other. Galley in example is the name for a ship's kitchen, but has also been applied to the kitchens found on planes too. And then there's also gangplank. This is the equipment used to help people get on and off of boats and planes. It's still regularly used with boats and has historically been used with planes, though now the more unique term to aviation of jet bridge has become way more popular. Though the two aviation terms which were stolen from sea travel that shocked me the most however were cockpit and pilot. These are terms so deeply linked with aviation and not really heard in the realm of boats, yet they do both have their origins with seafaring. We have evidence of cockpit being used in reference to boats from the 18th century, way before planes were ever a thing. The term ultimately has its origins tied to cockfighting, which would often take place in sunken pits. These locations on boats were often sunken down down like a pit for cockfighting, so they became known as cockpits. Then eventually this term was applied to aviation, appearing in the early 20th century. Likewise pilot is a term linked with planes deeply now. It would be odd to refer to someone driving a boat as a pilot, but that's exactly how the term was used in the 15th century. It was eventually applied to anyone who guided anything, either literally or metaphorically, and eventually became the go-to term for someone who controls a plane, usurping its use in sea travel. While all these terms I just mentioned are linked with aviation these days to some degree or another, they were all used in sea travel way before they were used in aviation. Aviation stole these terms from boats, though of course they don't always match up perfectly. There are terms and words still used in each mode of transport that are still unique to them. For example, people who work on planes have never really been referred to as sailors in any meaningful way. That term is still reserved for just water-based travels. And of course the name for the most popular kind of aviation vehicle, the plane, is unto itself a unique term. 
term not stolen from sea travel. Plane is simply a shortening of airplane or aeroplane, which is a whole topic unto itself. The air part of the name comes from the fact they are up in the air, and the plane part of the name comes from the word of plane, meaning flat, in relation to the flat wings of a plane. And while plane might have no relation to seafaring, other terms in aviation vehicles do, like aircraft, which can be used for any kind of flying machine, or airship, which is used for a different specific kind of aviation vehicle. Both the craft and ship in these names come from water travels. Before airplanes even existed, people were concocting hypothetical names for the flying machines of the future. Future. Terms like air vessel and air boat were thrown around, which very much relate to boating and ships. Though one I really love is aeromotive, which borrows from the word locomotive. As far as I'm aware, the lexicon of trains hasn't had too much of an impact on aviation, but man, now I really want to see a flying train or something. Someone go tell Studio Ghibli to make that film. Yet we aren't here to look into train vocabulary. We are here to look into how the language of boats was stolen by planes. And seemingly, there isn't really one defined reason as to how this came to be. We saw the words cockpit and pilot that they were being used for boats first, then were applied to planes. But it's not like one person or a group of boat and plane nerds got together at one specific moment in time and decided that the words should be used across the sea and the sky. It kind of seemingly just happened naturally. If we had to explain why aviation stole so many nautical terms in the simplest way, it would basically boil down to the fact that travelling over water is super old and travelling over sky is super new. We've been travelling on water for a very long time, from primitive rafts to sailing boats to modern cruise ships. Boats of one kind or another are the oldest known of mode of human transportation behind our own feet. We were in boats before we were riding horses. It's that old. Aviation, however, is a relatively newer thing. The earliest evidence we have of some kind of aviation comes from around 1000 BC, with the invention of kites in China, if you choose to include kites in all of this. Da Vinci famously created plans for a kind of flying machine, but he didn't have the capabilities to make it reality. Things got a bit more practical in 1783, when the first hot air balloon took flight. Then of course in 1903, the Wright brothers take their first flight, and it all kind of just expanded from there. It will never not blow my mind that it took just over 60 years to go from the Wright brothers to the moon landing. This shows us just how rapidly aviation grew, and in turn so did the ecosystem around it. We went from having tiny little planes seemingly held together by shoestrings and hope, to massive planes which require multiple compartments within them to serve specific purposes, whole staffs of people who each do a specific thing to make sure the flight goes smoothly, and of course places for these machines to depart and arrive. Though I don't know whose idea it was to shove these places full of shops selling all kinds of crap you don't need. But all these new elements of aviation needed names, and instead of whipping up new names for these things, they were just borrowed from the world of sailing and boats. As mentioned, this probably just naturally happened, but there are some key factors as to why using the language of nautical transport came so naturally to aviation. Both these modes of transport have some key similarities. They both feature huge vessels which contain multiple areas within them that have to be run by huge groups of people, and they both require special places to come and go from. Sea travel was also the closest thing we had to aviation at the time too. Sailing a ship across the ocean and flying a plane across the sky both require having to navigate a huge expanse of nothingness over a great distance. The sea in sailing's case and the sky in aviation's case. All while not being tethered to a designated route constructed by humans like a road or tracks. This probably explains to us why aviation didn't steal from the lexicon of cars or trains. Though once again, I'm still waiting for my air train. But I'm sure you can see, it kind of just made logical sense to apply these words to aviation, as opposed to making up whole new ones. Using established words in new fields to help someone come to grips with new ideas is something that happens often. Computing is a great example of this. A computer file has very little in common with an actual paper file, but using the term of file for these collections of ones and zeros helps people understand what exactly they are meant to be. So while crossing an ocean via a boat or plane might very well be completely different experiences, you will undoubtedly hear a lot of similar phrases and words. Name Explained depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explained videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explained or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. 
Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.